another informative episode of housing development a program that advocates for the provision of affordable accessible and decent housing for all as always i am Fleur Ani, your housing diva coming up today on the program we shall look at the burden of heavy weight of house rent on individuals and families also the unjust increase in house rent amidst the high cost of food stuff and other daily essentials we shall be discussing these and more right after the trending news in the housing sector. Housing Development Advocacy Network, HDAN, a pioneer non-governmental civil society organization in Nigeria, has called on President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to use his political will to develop the Nigeria mortgage sector. In a statement released on Sunday in Abuja signed by the Executive Director, HDAN, Festus Adebayo, the civil society organization called on President Tinubu not to forget his promise of creating a credit system for Nigerians. Adebayo stated that the government should always consider the idea of putting sinking funds in the mortgage system that will enable the mortgage banks to have enough money to lend to the people. Nigeria has been listed as a beneficiary of the 15 proposals approved by the board of the Green Climate Fund GCF, totaling $736.4 million to fund new climate projects in developing countries. GCF is the world's largest dedicated climate fund. GCF's mandate is to foster a paradigm shift towards low emission, climate resilient development pathways in developing countries. GCF has a portfolio of $13.5 billion, $51.8 billion including co-financing, delivering transformative climate action, covering 243 projects in more than 120 countries. Nigeria is among the Renewable Energy Performance Platform, REPP2. Others in the category are Cameroon, Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, Lesotho, Madagascar, Malawi, Niger, Sierra Leone, and Zambia with CAMCO. At the board's 37th meeting in Bicilli, Georgia, where decisions to support major outcomes for climate actions were reached, the funding amounts to $3.6 billion when co-financing is included. The last board meeting of the year brings GCF programming in 2023 to $2.1 billion of GCF resources and a total of $9 billion when co-financing is included. The Lagos State Government has decided to downward review some rates for physical planning processes across the state after outcry from relevant stakeholders, particularly professionals under the aegis of Nigerian Institute of Town Planners (NITP). Industry experts had feared that the over 100% increase amid sluggish economic situation, exchange rate volatility, and inflation and rising prices of building materials will cause the real estate sector further nosedive in its contribution to the gross domestic product as well as reduce activities in the construction industry. In a recent memo addressed to all heads of departments and units under the State's Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development by the Permanent Secretary, 
Oluwole Sotire says the ministry has obtained the approval of the governor for the review of some rates utilized for physical planning process, especially the fees presently being issued by the Lagos State Fiscal Planning Permit Authority, LASPA, as contained in Schedule 11 and 13 of the State's Fiscal Planning Permit Regulation 2019 as amended. information on housing finance and construction news, do well to visit www.africanhousingnews.com. Most low-income Nigerians, especially renting civil servants, devote at least more than half of their income to covering house rent payment. How do they feel about this yearly rent obligation since they can afford to own a house of their own at this point in time? Take a listen. The decision to move the capital city to the federal capital territory by the military administration under General Ibrahim Babangida seems to be fast bringing a burden on civil servants working in the capital city. This is because majority of civil servants who work and live in the capital city and outskirts of Abuja are complaining over the rent obligation they have to meet every 12 months. And this is affecting their efficiency at work and inadvertently slowing down government business. Housing development went around the capital city to fill the polls of Abuja citizens on the matter, and some of the respondents lamented, amongst other things, the absence of regulation to curb the excesses of landlords who seem to be operating without any human face. Abdullahi Anas is a civil servant who lives in Kubwa. According to him, he said, as a civil servant, the house rent and what we earn as salary is nothing to write home about. I say civil servant, federal civil servant here in Abuja, with the salary and what they are giving us as a house rent is very, very, is very, very high. It's not nothing to write home about. Adebayo Julius in his comments berated landlords in Abuja for failing to have a human face to see what tenants face yearly. It's quite unfortunate that even we, the downtrodden, we are not helping ourselves, especially the landlord. I don't know maybe because of the law attached to their name that made them to be misbehaving. Some landlord will still be putting call across to you, still reminding you that your, land, your rent has expired. You stand. I don't know whether blood no longer runs in our vein. You stand. That will not make you to have more sympathy when it's come to house rent. Or better, like I said earlier, all because of the Lord attached to their name, landlord, that made them to be misbehaving. The case of Linus Njoku, who lives in Maraba, Nasrawa State, and has to commute daily to work in the heart of the capital city, simply fits the experiences of civil servants and other Abuja residents, who in their majority have set their sights on small towns like Maraba, Masaka and Suleja because they cannot afford rent in the capital city. In the first instance, uh, every citizen of the country supposed to own his own house. But unfortunately, because of the way things are, uh, many of us have not, have not been able to attend that, uh, that uh, stage. Then on the house rent itself, what I say is a terrible, is a terrible situation is the landlords are not, um, they, 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 they are not being forced to regulate the house rent or the amount that's supposed to be charged on a particular type of house or a particular section side of uh, the country. So if government is, uh, is fully in control, government, we expected that government by now should have been able to say or to make a, a law, houses in this in this part of the country should be. This is how much they should regulate, how much the landlord should be collecting. I know that um, uh, building materials are too expensive, and um, and the government is uh, is not giving them giving the landlords money to build or refurbish their houses. But at the same time, at the same time, in as much as we have government in place, a lot of things are supposed to be regulated. Godon Atai, in his comment, said, rent in a Sokoro is very high. One needs to go the extra mile to pay rent. A two-bedroom apartment can go as high as 2.5 to 3.5 million naira. Rent in a Sokoro is very high. In fact, one needs to go extra mile to raise money to pay rent. 
uh, a two-bedroom uh, apartment can go as much as 2.53 million, sometimes even, even 3.5 million. And uh, if one is not really uh, having a, a reasonable source of income, uh, you cannot live there. It's unnecessarily high. Blessed Karam, who lives in a Sokoro extension, also lamented thoughts. House rent in the FCT is outrageous. House rent in Abuja is very, very outrageous, considering that um, Abuja is the administrative hoop of Nigeria. One would expect that um, house rent in Nigeria and uh, in Abuja should be very, very considerate because most of the occupants of Abuja are civil servants. But um, to my greatest surprise, you see the house rent in Abuja is very, very outrageous that um, one can hardly afford. That's why you see people living in a house in Abuja instead of the Abuja city. We don't have road. And you see, at times, if it is raining, you will see a lot of people will go by the roadside. They will be thrown dead on the main road. We also don't have toilet. You will see a toilet, you will still have to 30 uh, uh, tenants. They are using one. You can't leave your door open, go and buy something. Before you will know, Babambola will enter. By the time you will take them to police station, one hour is too much, the police people will, uh, uh, will, will release them. In fact, we don't know what is happening. This is the situation with many citizens in not just Nigeria. Are we ready for this conversation? What is the plight of an average Nigerian citizen in regards to housing? Housing is a fundamental human right and these issues must be addressed. It's good news. Are you a stakeholder in the built environment or you are looking for an authentic, credible source for housing and construction news in Africa? You now have an opportunity. Africa International Housing Show has now created a unique opportunity for you by establishing a full-fledged housing television, the first of its kind in Africa. You can now access information on home ownership, rental, building materials, finance, real estate and insurance, among others, all on Housing TV Africa, channel 149 on Star Time. Hi, I'm Bob Weinsheng, CEO of iBuild Global. Keep watching the Housing Development Program. The plight of Nigerians, especially civil servants, who pay rent annually with more than 30% of their income. Still on housing, the cost of accommodation across major cities in Nigeria has become a huge strain on the finances of average Nigerians who are still battling with the rising cost of goods and services. As foodstuffs and all the household items keep increasing day by day, some landlords at this time of the year unjustly increase their house rent. This is another hurdle to cross for sitting tenants and new accommodation seekers. Now let's hear Nigerians speak on these own voices on the streets. I know it's, it's definitely is going up, it's going to go up because we speak two bedroom flats as we speak today is about um, 1.3 million there about and it's still going up so obviously it's going to go up most definitely because um, landlords are already complaining that um, uh, materials has gone high cost of building has gone high so definitely they started serving notice of increment of rent already so that is there's nothing you can do about it the economy is going high things are going there's inflation things are going high so the landlords will capitalize on that and increase the house rents in fact the increase is more or less a something of daily basis. People are just increasing rent as they feel because of um, the high cost of living. If somebody has a house and he depends on it for maintaining himself and the cost of every other thing he or she has to buy keeps increasing on daily basis, you will expect him to be trying to increase rent. But some people are still reasonable. Yeah, some people still are reasonable to know that somebody has been your tenant for some time, therefore, the, the, the increase should be reasonable. Goods are going up every second in Nigeria. And from experience, 
or based on my view. When it goes up, it hardly comes down. So there's a problem. With the situ current situation in the country, uh, you see our Naira today is depreciating every day and the price of building material is very expensive. In fact, just, just, like, other, just like this year, you can find a lot of young men building house, but today now nobody is building house. Everybody is reserving money for food. Because even the food ma to eat the food, to, to, to have food served, is a problem. Most definitely, because the cost of building will definitely go up due to the cost of uh, rising building material. So it's not rocket science, it's easy to uh, anticipate an increase. If a landlord is increasing rent, it shouldn't be alarming, it's something that you should already foresee. It's good news. Are you a stakeholder in the built environment or you are looking for an authentic, credible source for housing and construction news in Africa? You now have an opportunity. Africa International Housing Show has now created a unique opportunity for you by establishing a full-fledged housing television, the first of its kind in Africa. You can now access information on home ownership, rental, building materials, finance, real estate and insurance, among others. All on Housing TV Africa, channel 149 on Star Time. It is a good development. It's, uh, it's something that we encourage others to look forward to annually. And I hope they will be able to sustain this. And um, as a senator, I will see how we can give support to them in the Senate so that they can go ahead to improve housing in Nigeria. I feel happy and also feel challenged in the sense that this is absent for more work because you are doing the work and people are seeing you and are recognizing you. What is this that you doing on So I want to thank the organizers for finding new work in this area. Welcome back. Still on housing issues. How can the average and poor Nigerian cope with the upsurging rental housing as many are still facing the challenges of owning a home due to the high cost of housing? How do we as a people build more low-cost housing that low-income earners and even young Nigerians with stable income can afford? In this interview, Festo Sadebayo speaks to the former president of the Mortgage Banking Association of Nigeria, Mr. Nia Kinlosi. Take a listen. Yeah, you didn't mention uh, whether the National Assembly need to pay attention also to the issue of mortgage uh, bank bill. Oh, that's now, now, that's beyond the, we have the recapitalization for Federal Mortgage Bank. Yes, what can you say about that? That's totally important. needs to be looked at because, because, you cannot looked have, because you cannot have a Federal Mortgage Bank, a federal mortgage bank who, do, who, does, who, who, who has shareholders funds which are eroded. Really, it needs to be recapitalized really, to be for recapitalized the role they are playing. For the role they this are is very, playing. very important. Very, very important. We, we need to also, there are quite a lot of other mortgage related, mortgage -related um, uh, bills um, are waiting, bills. Are waiting um, uh, passage um, uh, through the National passage, Assembly. There are quite a number of them. A lot of them, I don't want to go off. There are quite a list of them. A lot of things that need to be revised to show in line with the new times, what is happening now, and all these things. For instance, we also need to have the mortgage guarantee come up. That is also a major issue. That is one where we also hope now that we have a new CBN management. They can look at this and ensure before the end of the year this mortgage guarantee company can come up. This is very, very important to show support to the mortgage banking industry and the commercial banks. So that if you give mortgages, if the loan is a default, and before you can realize, you can get liquidity from the mortgage guarantee company. This is very, very important in ensuring the mortgage system works effectively as well. NHF has to become a serious matter. As of today, the CBN is not championing the need to implement that law. 
that's it, CBN should pursue all commercial banks to contribute to that fund. Similarly, the, the, the insurance companies. What's your position on this matter? Yeah, I think the, the law is clear. Until the law is changed, it must be law abiding. And I'm happy that in recent times, there was um, a meeting, or not a public hearing, where National Assembly called some of the insurance companies to a meeting, yes. and they talked about it. Yes. People must obey the laws. It's part of the rule of law. If you think the law needs to be changed, they, until the law is changed, you must obey the law. If you have that, you have a lot of resources coming in for a mortgage bank. So we were talking about beyond the share capital of being recapitalized, the fund they will need will not be from the share capital. But what it does is this. It provides a buffer. And if you have your own share capital, then you can raise more funds because you have a stronger balance sheet. And that is why it's very important. All the aspects of the NHF law must be, people must abide by them. You have been the former president of Mortgage Banking Association of Nigeria. Do you have any information from CBA of why they are not obeying the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on issue of national housing fund? Well, I can't um, speak for central bank since I'm not there. But one thing, as I said, sometimes we need to also review this law because really, sometimes if you look at the practicability, right, some of the funds we're even asking the banks to provide, are, are, it's based on volumes, right? It's not. Some is on profitability for the banks, yes. For insurance company, it is part of the operating funds. If they bring the operating funds in, of course, it's a difference in the As I said, we need to probably look at the practicability. At the point in time, these laws were passed then. We are just about taking off, so it was okay. But now, if they are to just take all the balance sheets of the insurance company and collapse them and bring out those funds and give it to Federal Mortgage Bank, it will affect the ability of those insurance companies to meet their claims. And it will be an issue as well when they can't pay their claims. And then NHF is hold now. It's about, uh, so automatically that law is said need to be um, reviewed. It, yes, a lot of laws yes, need to be laws. reviewed. Not yes. only NHF law, the law setting of Federal Mortgage Bank, the law, a lot need of things. Even the, even the structure of NHF itself. A lot reviewed. of things need to be done. This part of the, uh, an area this government needs to look at is the area of reforms, reforms, Reform. reforms. Reform. If yeah. you do the right reforms on policies, to provide the enabling environment, to drive along and, and support what we want to achieve. There is a lot need to be done because we need to attract capital. Federal government will not have enough money for housing and they cannot expect to have that. A lot of money will have to come from private sources within and outside the country. Private capital will come in when they know there's an enabling environment supportive for their purpose and they know that at any point in time there is rule of law and you know certain things can be done and you don't need to look for any godfather to get your rights done. And they're part of the judicial system as well. These are all the things that we need to look about. It must start with the reforms, reforms of the policies, reforms of all these laws. We don't have road. And you see, at times, if it is raining, you will see a lot of people will go by the roadside. They will be thrown dead on the main road. We also do not have toilet. You will see a toilet, you will still have to 30 uh, uh, tenants. They are using one. You can't leave your door open, go out and buy something. Before you will know, Babambola will enter. By the time you take them to the police station, one hour is too much, the police people will, uh, uh, will, will release them. In fact, we don't know what is happening. This is the situation with many citizens in not just Nigeria. Are we ready for this conversation? What is the plight of an average Nigerian citizen in regards to housing? Housing is a fundamental human right, and these issues must be addressed. My name is architect Ahmed Nengiwa, the Honorable Minister of Housing and Urban Development. I have endorsed the Housing Development Program. Welcome back. You're watching Housing Development. First of all, you're there with me, Akin Lucy, former president, Mortgage Banking Association of Nigeria. How do we bring sanity to a sector that is characterized by different levels of malpractice? This is one question amongst others that most Nigerians are asking about the real estate sector. Against this backdrop, the organizers of Africa Housing Awards say the award was established to promote excellence and reward excellent practices 
in the real estate sector. Now, which company deserves to win as the best in corporate social responsibility alongside the African Housing Awards? The Affordable Housing Hall of Fame will also hold. For more, do well to visit www.africanhousingawards.com. Now, here's a quick one from the organizers. Organizers of this event have been doing very, very well in encouraging brands like us and a lot of other companies. So well done. Really, really exciting. That's really hard. The need to provide safe, comfortable, functional, affordable, and decent shelter in a proper setting within a neighborhood supported by continuous maintenance of the built environment for the daily living activities of individuals and families within the community cannot be overemphasized. On that note, I wrap up today's episode of Housing Development. Thanks for watching. I remain your housing beaver, Blur Annie. See you soon.